There's a rumor going around that Tesla might cut prices on the Model 3 some point tonight, if not tomorrow. Judging by the fact that Tesla's stock is down almost 1% here in after hours trading, I don't think that's much of a rumor, unfortunately. It seems like potentially someone already knows something, but let's not get ahead of ourselves anything is possible. Here in this video, we will be going over all of your Tesla stock news, and in this case, rumors that you need to know that could affect Tesla. Now, assuming these rumors are false, we will go over what my expectation is for Tesla's stock from now until earnings, because I did make a bullish trade on Tesla, which could prove to be pointless if Tesla does indeed cut prices tonight. Or tomorrow. Beyond that, we will be going over the data coming out tomorrow morning. We do have some pretty big data that could move our markets. So let's go ahead and get into all of this information. If you find value or you like my perspective or just an open, honest, transparent opinion, hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and let's get started. And I want to start off this video by saying if you are a long-term investor like I am, I live for this. What I mean is this, all of the FUD around Tesla stock right now. What about this one? This is a, a good one. Or this one. As Peter Lynch says, know what you own and why you own it. All of this fear, uncertainty, and doubt, people panicking just means I'm gonna make more money you're going to make more money. You don't actually make money when you sell a stock, you make money when you buy a stock. So the lower Tesla does go, well, the more money you stand to potentially make. Gary Black says, hopefully we don't get US price cuts on Model 3s tonight. I've actually seen this from a couple other people as well, some accounts that are in China specifically, talking about a potential price cut coming in the US over the next couple of hours. Gary Black says on X that Tesla investors keep asking why Tesla's stock is going down when the other Magnificent 7 stocks are rising. Year to date, Tesla is already down 15% and the NDX is up 1%. And that's because Tesla keeps cutting prices. Wall Street doesn't buy the argument that cutting prices causes volumes to increase, given the experience of 2022 and 2023, and keeps reducing their 2024 and 2025 earnings estimates. And then he says, hopefully we don't get US price cuts on the Model 3 tonight. Since the beginning of 2024, I've reduced my Tesla 2024 EPS from $4.20 to $3.75. That is a reduction of about 11%. EPS estimates drive stock prices and price cuts cause analysts to cut earnings estimates. Now, personally, we can only assume that cutting prices hurts margins. This last price cut in Europe, it's going to affect margins. On some of your Model Y variants, that was a price cut of $4,000 to $5,500. That's going to hurt margins to some degree. Now, Europe, it's the third most important market to Tesla. They do sell around 100,000 vehicles in Europe every quarter. So it is a sizable amount, but the US or China, if we get price cuts there in large amounts, that's gonna be much worse for EPS estimates. I am under the assumption though that Tesla is not just letting margins crumble at this point. I'm sure there were other things that helped to offset the price reductions. I mean, just look for an example. The price of lithium has been falling precipitously. Lithium miner Al Barl, Al Marl, cuts cost and plans layoffs as EV demand and lithium prices fall. Lithium carbonate has went from about $500,000 per ton down to $95,000 per ton, all in the course of the last 12 months. Now this chart is actually not in US dollars, so the dollar amount's going to fluctuate, but you can see you've dropped about 80% in 12 months. That's just one example of how Tesla could have raised margins before they cut prices. But we will obviously get more clarity coming on Tesla's earnings call on January 24th. Gary Black says global EV demand grew by 30 plus percent in 2023 and is likely to grow by 30 percent plus in 2024. What EV slowdown? I think when analysts come to this realization as well, there will be brighter days ahead for Tesla. There's a lot of uncertainties for 2024, one of which is the vehicle market. 
how much demand are we going to see? Now, something was a little bit different today with Tesla stock. Tesla stock was obviously down quite a bit, about 2% today in regular trading, down even more than that in after hours. It is rough out there for Tesla stock. There's no lie about that. But over the past five days, you really haven't been seeing much for inflows. Well, today, large scale orders, these are orders in the millions, hundreds of millions of dollars sometimes, um, you did see a lot of that taking place. So over the past prior two days, you had about $900 million worth of outflows via these large scale orders. Today, you actually had almost $600 million of inflows from these large scale orders. That is a positive sign. We are also seeing someone out there is going pretty large in Tesla weekly call options with 1.6 million of them purchased for the 225 call expiring tomorrow and 1.4 million purchased for the 230 call also expiring tomorrow. Option activity today in Tesla stock from hedge funds and institutions as a collective, you had 829 orders totaling $2.39 billion. Definitely an elevated day. Today though, looked a little bit better than yesterday's positive order value of 31%. Today you're looking at 45%, so almost net neutral as far as hedge funds and institutions and their large option trades. It appears to me that Tesla stock could be getting very close to a bottom if indeed Tesla does not end up cutting prices in the US in the near term. Tesla stock hit the low today at $200 eight dollars 74 cents per share you retraced quite a bit to close at the end of regular trading at about 212 dollars per share it looks like a lot of big buy orders came in right at about 210 dollars per share if we take a look at today on the one minute candlestick chart this blue line this diag this horizontal line that i have drawn right here it is right at $210. So you actually found a lot of support here many, many times throughout the day. You were actually only under $210 for about a half an hour. So as long as we don't get any more bad news, I think 210 is likely the bottom. The other reason for this belief is the RSI is at 28.79. So people have been very much in this sell first, ask questions later mentality. Heading into next Wednesday's earnings call, it kind of makes sense. The last three earnings calls have been an absolute disaster and Tesla stock has sold off quite a bit following all of them. The past three earnings calls, you've walked away with more questions than answers. But I will tell you, that you have massively de-risked Tesla stock heading into earnings. That's not to say Tesla stock is immune from falling if there's bad earnings or bad guidance or just overall a bad earnings call. That can still happen, but your odds have dramatically shifted in the bull's favor now. Saying Tesla stock's gonna fall after earnings if the stock's $260, $270 is a lot more understandable than saying Tesla stock's going to plummet following earnings at $210 per share. That is the reason I did make an option trade in Tesla stock today to play Tesla earnings. I don't plan to hold it. It's more of a uh, let's get in, let's make some free contracts, let's get out. If you guys want to come follow that trade and all of the trades that we put on almost every single day, check out that link down below in the description of this video for the trading community. So let's be clear. If Tesla does cut prices again, or if earnings are super bad, I mean, they have to be like really bad and you have to get some really bad guidance at this point for Tesla stock to plummet like we have seen over the past couple of earnings. I don't think that's likely. You likely bottom here at about 210. But if you do get a bad guide or you get price cuts in the US for the Model 3, Tesla stock is probably going sub $200. Then I mean, Tesla is like, a, take my money, take my kidney, just take what you want. Give me as many shares of Tesla as possible. Obviously, don't do that. But that's kind of the, the situation that we could be dealt. At least that's my personal opinion. 
Now, coming tomorrow, we will be getting some very important economic data. This from this comes from the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. These are preliminary numbers for January. So we're going to get a couple more of these, but the markets do pay very close attention to this particular survey because it's been going on for a long time. It's been very accurate in predicting you know, how the consumer is feeling, how things might evolve, right? It's pretty good at indicating when the consumer is slowing down, when things are doing well out there. Hopefully that makes some sense. But tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, we will get the headline number, which is expected at 70. Last month's number was 69.7. This is not as big of a deal. You do want to watch the other things like Michigan uh, current conditions, Michigan consumer expectations, five-year inflation expectations, and one-year inflation expectations. Specifically, those inflation expectations do tend to move the markets quite a bit. Now, what we have seen recently is five-year inflation expectations jumped. They spiked to the highest point you have seen in about 20 years to 3.2%. And then they just came right back down to 2.9%. Considering inflation is in a much better place than it was in 2021 and 2022, you would expect five-year inflation expectations would be at a low. It's actually not. It's it's they're they're sitting at some of the highest points they have been at. So if you start to see this come down, then you potentially could see the bulls come out a little bit more in our markets. Now, one-year inflation expectations, not as important as five-year, but these are also strange. So October, you started to really spike. You spiked again in November to 4.5%, and then you fell to 3.1%. Tomorrow, you do have an expectation of 3.1%, which is would also be the same as last month for your one-year inflation expectation. Tomorrow, you will also hear from Fed Barr, but he is the chair of basically bank regulation and supervision. So he usually talks about banks more than Fed policy, but if he does say something that can affect the markets, it's at least get worth giving you guys a heads up. He will be speaking at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. We do also have a new AI investor sentiment survey. This is fascinating. So the bulls are still in control. 40.4% of investors are bullish. The neutral investors jumped quite a bit to 32.9% from 27.2% previously. And the bearish investors only increased a little bit from 24.2% to 26.8%. So from my knowledge, being an investor for now seven, eight years um, and, and doing this each and every single day, you tend to see the bulls, let's say, at a high point. Markets are euphoric. When you start to go through a downturn, you don't instantly see the bears pick up. It typically goes to neutral. You'll you'll see neutral investors pick up and then you'll see the bears pick up. Once you start to see the bears picking up, that's when you're in some real downside. And that's when we can say we're closer to a bottoming. You might say, what are you talking about? A bottoming? Well, your average stock has been falling quite a bit since the start of 2024. The SPY or the triple Qs are still trading at nearly all time highs because they are market weighted to the Magnificent Seven, but really under the surface does not look good at all. As I reported earlier, the percentage of stocks above their 50 day moving average is currently at about 58%, which is uh, a far cry from where you were at about 90% starting off 2024. Now, if you're in Tesla stock, you're going to know exactly what I mean. Stocks have not been doing so great. We do have some good news to report. Japan's core CPI in December shows slowest year-on-year growth since June of 2022, according to the government. That is because Japan is the single largest owner of U.S. treasuries, owning about $1.1 trillion worth of U.S. bonds. Japan has not raised rates in over 16 years, so a lot of Japanese yen goes into the treasury market. The last thing we need right now is Japan to start selling U.S. treasuries and buying their own back because that would put a lot of pressure on what you could see here, TLT, and if TLT falls, that means 10-year, 20-year, 30-year treasuries 
their yields will go higher. Tesla China analyst says that he is anticipating strong sales data ahead for the upcoming two Tuesdays. That's when we will get the weekly vehicle insurance registrations out of China. Those weekly insurance registration numbers have actually been pretty big catalysts to send Tesla stock higher. Indeed, Tesla stock out of 14 trading days has only been green two of them and one of them was because of last week's vehicle insurance registration numbers let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you made it to the end of this video if you want to take it a step further and come trade with us live in real time every time i make trades i send out notifications you can come talk with me talk with other like-minded investors and or traders and hopefully let that service be of a benefit to you check that out link down below in the description of this video my name is michael tyler enjoy the rest of your day and you guessed it I'll see you in the next one.